What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Poe Town Heroes, your source for all your standard budget Pokemon needs. I'm Rhyhorn Trainer Steven. Bogey Scientist Sean. And today we've got a really, really fun deck for you guys. It's uh, It was actually suggested to us by our buddy Tom. Uh, he ended up coming up with a really, really good idea, and I think we have really took it to a whole nother extreme. I, again, just giving it our own budget touch. I like extreme, so let's go. So yeah, without further ado, we'll just jump right in to, to Aegis Slash fan, uh, Rotom. And this is this is the deck. And it's all revolving around Aegis Slash from, uh, what is that, Breakpoint? Yeah. Okay, the Aegis Slash from Breakpoint. Uh, it's got 140 HP, 3 colorless energy, and this is the attack we're using, Powerful Sword. You double the number of damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. That's that's all it does, but again, you can get multiple knockouts at once with this card, and it really is amazing. And if it's absolutely necessary, uh, Megaton Slash, it does 100 damage, or for two Psychic and two Colorless, it does 100 damage, and it does 10 to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So if you happen to, if you just need that little bit of extra stopping power, that would do it. But we're mostly focusing on Painful Sword. Now, to maximize Painful Sword, we've got two of our two high flying friends with us. First, we've got Ta the promo Tapu Koko. Uh, for a double colorless energy, it does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. And if you can get this set up quick, you can start adding on the damage before they really have a chance to do anything with it. Because yes. it hits everything on your opponent's side of the field everything even bench now with boring skies out of the field you don't have to worry about mass healing decks exactly i uh, i think uh maybe water decks and lana grass decks and uh gritania and um and maybe uh pokemon center lady maybe but yeah the the heals really aren't that strong this time around so in, even with this, it's just 20 to everything. And then this, this suggestion is going to seem a little odd, but it actually really works. Because with this set, they introduced a whole line of Rotoms. You got Heat Tom, Grass Tom, all that kind of stuff. And, and the, we want the Fan. We want the Fan Tom because it is a rare, but I think the Rotoms are like the highest pulled rares out of everything. And not a lot of people are using them because they look at this ability that if there's nine or more tool cards in the discard, you ignore all energy and thinking that it won't work. But with this one, we're actually playing the hard cost yes. because it does the same thing as the Tapu Koko, that it does 20 damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon. The only two differences is this has 70 HP instead of 110 and also, its uh, attack cost is 3 instead of the DCE that Coco has. Uh, so, why not run more Coco instead of Rotom? Money. It really comes down to the money. Because as of right now, I think as of the recording of this video, the Tapu Coco is going for $2 a piece. About, yeah. While the fan Rotom is going for about $0.50. Because no That's one's that. using it. So you can get a playset of the Fan Rotom for two dollars, or you could get a playset of the Coco for, about 20, for or ten or whatever for about ten. But even even with that in mind, we want to make sure we're stacking as much damage as possible. So we're actually running both. We're running the Fan Rotom to get to do more damage. We're also running the the Coco to to spread that damage. While we get set up with the Aegis Slash just to sweep and destroy everything. Get yes. five, six, get all knockouts at once. Which is a fun and challenging thing to do. But in order to do that, we do need a little bit of support. And how we're going to do that is first we're going to accelerate our energy with uh, Energy Lotto. You, we run three. You look at the top seven cards of your deck. You reveal an energy card there and put it into your hand. This grabs DCE. This grabs the Psychic Energy. Uh, if you ran this in other decks, it grabs unit energy, strong energy, just all the energy. 
Uh, not only that, but we're also running uh, four Wishful Baton. Because uh, if a Pokemon would be knocked out, you get to transfer three basic energy from that Pokemon to one of your bench. So what we would, what we would do is either we'll hard cast the, uh, the spinning fan, so we'll actually attach three psychic energy onto the fan Rotom. We try to keep DCEs for the Coco, or if we're really falling behind. But either way, set it up so we keep doing the damage. This gets knocked out. We transfer it to say another one, keep adding damage if necessary, or put it onto the Aegis Slash, and it's set up and ready to go with that same three energy. I uh, we run two enhanced hammer because special energy is really heavy in the format right now. Strong energy, counter energy, the prism energy, just the unit energies, they're, they're all really seeing play and this will definitely just slow them down a bit. We run three Evo sodas because we need to get out the Aegis Slash as soon as possible. Yes. This, is, this is one of the ways to do it. We run two stretchers. This is to get back a Coco or a Phantom just to make sure the Aegis Slash stays alive longer or even pull it out if it's needed. Uh, two switch just to make sure we can switch in even though it's more or less to get the Aegis Slash out because he does have a three retreat and we don't want to lose that energy no. because Coco's got a free retreat and the Fan Rotom's got a free retreat. So, so both of them are covered. It's, it's just to get the Aegis Slash out if needed. Uh, we run two Ultra Ball. Again, this is to hard evolve if we need to, grab a Coco if we need it. Yes. We run two Bridget because we definitely need to get a setup of at least a Coco, a Fan Rotom, or a, a, and a Hone Edge. The Hone Edge being like the priority thing to get down because you want to start evolving that as soon as possible. Yes. We run three Cynthia, including the Full Art Cynthia that you guys helped us get. Thank you very much. We run one Gladian. Mainly uh, to get those pieces of Aegis Slash out out of the prizes, especially at that stage one. Exactly, because if any of them are in the prizes, your deck kind of shuts down quick, and you're relying on some really low HP Pokemon to ensure knockouts 20 at a time. It works, but it, takes you, a while. it does take a while. Plus, if you keep drawing it in the prizes, it allows you to keep keep grabbing prizes. I know I keep grabbing a DCE with this because a DCE always ends up in the prize and that gets a Coco ready to go like turn two, turn three. So we just we just one, run the one because you can play it multiple times. Uh, we run three Guzma. This is more like... It's Guzma. It's Guzma, except where a lot of players would grab something that they could knock out for the free prizing. We're actually doing the opposite and pulling up something that we can just stall out with. Because I uh, obviously they're gonna try to load up one or two Pokemon. We pull up something that they weren't planning on loading up, and hopefully either force them to make a Guzma play or force them to escape rope or switch or retreat and use up their resources. We run 4N. This is more or less hand disruption, but also a hand refresh for us. We run uh, two Sycamore. Again, this is a uh, hand refresh. We run one Team Flare Grunt just to slow them down because it discards an energy from the active. Uh, we run two Team Skull Grunt again, uh, disruption just to get energy out of their de out of their hand and get them slowed down as much as possible. Four Batons because we don't want to lose our energy and we want to keep moving them from Pokemon to Pokemon to Pokemon, and this really is like the best way to go about it. Uh, you will actually see this engine a lot in a lot of our decks uh, coming up with the sets because we want to ensure that the energy stays on and, and we're not losing it. We run four double colorless energy and we run eight psychic energy. Uh, and like I said, this deck is really, really fun. It's a, not a lot of a lot of people see the Como stuff running coming, but they don't really see the uh, they don't see the Aegis Slash coming. So we'll jump in with Ten Saiga, which uh, we decided to name the deck Ten Saiga because we are major nerds. Uh, if you guys know where we got the name Ten Saiga, please put it down in the comments down below. Uh, we read every comment and we'll definitely let you guys know. Um, but yeah, we just want to see if you guys can figure out uh, figure out where we got the name Ten Saiga. We want a coin flip. You guys want to go first? Well, yeah. 
We we not we need to get set up ASAP. And of course we didn't of uh eight basics we didn't start with one. Yeah, we are running four basics in this, aren't we? But yeah, um this is a very garbage start, even if we had a hone edge or even if we have something we could have used, because I I do not like I, that I setup. I hope the other Dubé would have been in the deck. Would have made it a little bit faster, but... That's better. A lot better. We had to take two mulligans, so that's going to hurt two a little bit. Two mulligans on a deck that has eight basics? I know. I know, we... Do you want to wait? Do you want to wait the turn? Or do you want to just play it safe? Well, we've got the age. So well, we got the turn. We we can bring them down to six pre six energy any six cards, anyways. Yeah, we might as well start with a hand disruption. Uh, to can, get nothing. We can put the horn edge so the one is not a target. Womp womp. Oh well, we get drew into Cynthia. Yeah, we'll Cynthia next turn. <laughs> So we're going up against a Panpour, Quillfish, Lapras. It's a pretty interesting deck setup you've got going on. We'll just do Water Gun for 10. Glaceon EX. Okay, so I think we're going up against something expanded. Well, Glaceon's still standard for a little bit. So we'll Energy Phantom. We'll play Cynthia. And then we draw the double colors. You got your dual blade. <laughs> Either way, next turn we'll be able to start getting some damage out. And what's nice about uh, Aegis Slide is it, it gets around Glaceon Crystal Ray. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, during your punishment turn. It does not prevent the effects of attacks, it prevents the damage. <laughs> We're not doing anything, we're just doubling the da damage that's already on it. We would be. Yeah, because that is an effect of effects of the attack so yeah that actually would work okay um that's that's making me nervous too soon too soon very very too soon um oh energy evolve and end oh get the dual yay get the dual let's just energy. Say, let's get set up like normal if Age anything flash. else we can stab it so oh cool no Coco? Ultra Ball. No Coco, but yeah, you're right. We do have the Ultra Ball. So we, we get will... the Coco ready to for that DCE. We'll get rid of a switch. Oh, well, Psychic, because then it I gives think us, a, gives us an option psychic, whether yeah. DC gives us an option to attach it to Coco as well. That is true. We'll drop the Coco. And we'll swing. Yeah, and then again, this deck, you're just trying to stack on as much damage counters as possible. So you'll see us just attack until everything's knocked out, and then just come up with the sweep. Because uh, without the EX, the highest is, let's see, 80, 60, 120. So we only need like 68 or 60 damage on everything, and then we can just knock out in one fell swoop. Put it all on the same Pokemon that would just bring up the Coco. Yep, we'll put it all on the Aegislash, so that Aegislash is ready to go. If anything else, it's not a it's not a bad attacker either. So it is not it's not in the slightest. So we will DCE. Let's slow him down a we'll little bit. We'll grunt by getting rid of one of his energy. And let's get the other Aegislash out, so it's not. Oh, good surprise! Awesome. Good surprise! It's okay. Now we know where it is. So right now we just we're just stacking on it or stacking on damage counters. As much counters. damage as possible. Because right now, okay, so he can do he can do fifty damage. Oh, he got the splash energy. Okay. Okay, that might. Well, we did so kind of. So the King Drill will be will be safe. Yeah, the King Drill is going to be safe. We'd almost get a knockout on the Quillfish. Or I think one more attack and we can start lining up knockouts for the Age of Slash. We'll drop a I Phantom. I think just keep swinging until it brings up the, until they bring up the Glaceon. We'll get rid of his Splash Energy. I think and just then, keep flipping until we think it's enough. 
That's that's what I'm thinking too. Just you got a knockout. Yeah, because this deck you just need to sit down and swing. Just keep swinging for the fences. Uh, it's it does take a little getting used to uh, actually offering up uh, knockout prizes and or giving up prizes, especially when you that's, are trying to stay ahead on the price six train. There is six on Glaceon. So Tegabin can swing two more and be done. In theory, so let's get... There oh. is no energy. Let's see if we can grab a DC. Oh, there we go. We got a DC. Do you think you're Phantom or do you want to... I want to get Phantom ready to go. Because we'll probably top deck in energy. And I think we need to swing one... Is it... Once, once Glaceon hits 100, we, we can switch out. Because then we're knocking, we're getting all the prizes in one fell swoop. We just need one more. So all we need is, is an energy. one energy. There we go. Top Praise deck. the top deck. And if he... You have a good deck. But for right now, we'll just 20 to everything. And hope he doesn't play Alana. We, we knocked out the Quillfish. We got a Bridget, which we could use, but we actually don't really need it right now. I mean, we can get the remaining Cocos and Fan Club Rotoms out of the deck, but... We could, but... And we know he's not he's not safe from Lana now. But we, as... Yeah. We but, can pick up the remaining uh, prizes. Yeah, because right now we get... We get a knockout on Lapras. We get the... We get the Glaceon, and we get the Cedra at least, and the... And the semi four. We get five prizes. We only need four. Mm -hmm. Fancy that. So yeah, he can move his energy all he wants. Well, let's just let's just. We will retreat for free. Bring out Aegis Slash. Well played. You have a good deck. And we'll take one, two, three, four, five, five prizes. And there's the Age of Slash. And the Wishful Baton. See, a lot of people know of the Coco, at least of Coco, and knowing how to spread the damage. Uh, they see the Rotom, they think it's going to be the same thing, and they think that's the deck. But coming up with the Age of Slash and just, just, just reaping all your prizes. 960 po uh, damage done. It includes everything that's double, too. And includes all the double damage, but it's... I, this is a really really fun deck so Tom if you're definitely watching this I uh, thank you for the idea with Aegislash this is one of uh, definitely one of the more gimmicky fun decks we've built yes. uh, it is it is definitely one of my one of my favorites it's it's a nice fun one if I want to uh, play somebody who doesn't know what uh, what those two do yes but um but yeah that was uh, ten Saiga. Again, and if you know where we got the name, go down in the comments and write it out below. Uh, and while you're down in the comments, also be sure to hit that subscribe button to become a Potown hero yourself. Uh, hit us up on po or hit us up on TCGO. We are Po underscore Town underscore Heroes. And then also be sure to hit us up on Facebook, facebookcom slash Uh We read every comment. We uh, post up all our new videos. We ask, we do polls and questions, and we we really want to know uh, want to know more from you guys. So uh, as always, may all your games go well, and may the top deck be in your favor. Until next time.